Welcome to our online Christingle service. We've recorded it so that you can join in with all the fun of Christingle from your home. I hope you have got a orange with a candle and sweets ready. Um, we're going to invite you later on in this video to light your Christingles, but don't do it just yet. To start, we are going to use some responses and I'm going to invite you to join in with the words that will appear on the screen. Light looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said Light. Peace looked down and saw war. I will go there, said Peace. Love looked down and saw hatred. I will go there, said love. So he, the Lord of light, the Prince of peace, the King of love, came down and crept in beside us. And now we're going to hear our first carol.
decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken whilst Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Hello, today I'm going to read you a story. A long, long time ago, on the night when Jesus was born, there was a little mouse called Michael. Now, I hope you're not afraid of little mice, because this was a very friendly one. He had big ears and a long tail and small eyes and a red jacket to keep out the cold. He was sleeping in a hole just above a rock, thinking nice thoughts and making nice sounds. Suddenly he was awoken by a strange noise. He looked up into the sky and saw that it was bright, bright as day, though it was the middle of the night. And then he Michael thought he would like to find out what the singing was all about. So he scampered along to see a good friend. An owl who lived up a tree and had a good view of everything that went on. Twit, 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 twit. What's all that noise about? There's a great commotion, all because a little baby has been born in the village of Bethlehem. Everybody's going to see him. Bethlehem, that's miles away. Do you think it's worth me going to? Asked Michael, oh. and the owl replied. Oh, I am sure you would find it. A memorable experience, twit. Twoo, twit, twoo. Off went Michael. There weren't any buses or trains in these days, so he had to swim across two rivers and climb hills all on his own. There was a long way to go. At last, he had arrived and he stood in the yard. Next to the stable where Jesus was born, he was quite exhausted and his red jacket was all dirty. So he gave himself a lick to clean himself up as best as he could. After all, he wanted the baby to see him at his best while he was sorting himself, uh, while he was sorting himself along here. <coughs> Hello you, I mean Mrs. Ew. Where are you going? I'm going to see the baby. Can I come with you? Asked Michael, thinking he'd get a good view if he stood on the sheep's shoulders. Have you got your present? No, answered Michael, for he didn't think of bringing a present. Then you can't come with me. What kind of present have you got, Mrs. Ew? I've got some wool to keep the baby warm. <laughs> Into the stable walked Mrs. Yu and her friends, as they left Michael, heard another sound. Well, hello, Mrs. Koo. Sorry, uh, Mrs. Cow. How do you do? How? I mean, do. And where are you off to? Me. Me. I'm not off anywhere. I'm here to see the baby. Would you give me a ride on your back so that I can uh, see him? No. Mm. You have a present. No. Oh. And you can't come to. What kind of present have you brought, Mrs. Cow? No. Mm. I've got some milk in case the baby gets thirsty. 
Moo. So, Mrs. Cow moo mooed her way into the stable. Michael was quite sad. He could not get in, and he was especially sad when he heard how the people inside were enjoying themselves. Michael was la la ring him, himself when he heard another visitor. Cluck, cluck. Well, hello, hen. Mrs. Hen to you, Sonny, if you don't mind. Okay, okay, don't get your feathers ruffled. I'm surprised you to see you here all the same. Cluck, cluck. No surprise at all. This isn't the first mate in me ward I visited. I like to see babies just as much as everyone else. Cluck, cluck. That's why I'm here. Just in case you were wondering, what are the chances of us going in together? You see, I don't know anybody. Have you a present for the baby? No, I don't. Well, you can't come with me. At least I've brought some eggs with me. That's my gift for the child. But I don't see any eggs. That's because I haven't made them yet. Cluck, cluck. Uh, and away she clucked into the stable. Michael got sadder and sadder. He was determined to get in, but he didn't know how. So he thought he would walk around for a bit and eventually he found himself right outside the stable door. He looked up and you'll never guess what was staring him right in the face. Meow. Meow. It was a big cat. Meow. It was a very big ginger tomcat with smelly breath. It hadn't, it hadn't, it had been eating fish supper and it hadn't cleaned its teeth it breathed right on michael mouse's face just what are you after i'm just here to see the baby you're just here to see the baby have you got a present for the baby no i haven't Well, you are not getting in. But what about you? You don't have a present for the baby. What are you doing in the stable? I'm applied to keep the riffraff like you far, far away. Meow. And at that, the cat went to hit Michael with his big ginger paw. But Michael scampered and ran to the side of the stable where he puffed and puffed, breathless with fear and excitement. While he was puffing and panting, he saw some other visitors to the stable. Not hens, not sheep or cows, but other ones. You know who? So there was Michael, he'd run all the way, he got his clothes dirty, he'd talked to the visitors going in, he'd heard the singing inside, he'd been threatened by a maladjusted tomcat and he couldn't, he couldn't get in. Michael was sad, he was very, very sad, and he began to cry. A big tear dribbled down to the end of his nose and on to his red jacket. He was so sad. I don't know what it was, but something made him look up. He looked up at the stable wall and 
though it was very dark, he saw a chink of light about the size of a ten pence piece. It was a little hole. And Michael wondered if he could maybe climb up to it. It was very high, and as he climbed higher and higher, the wind got louder and louder. It was blowing a gale by the time he reached the hole. First, he squeezed his head in. Then, he squeezed his body in. And then, he went head first into the hole and stuck his bottom in it and let his tail dangle down outside. It took him a little while to get used to the light because it was so bright in the stable. The f but when, as soon as his eyes were all right, the first thing he noticed was that Mary, the baby's mother, was looking over at him. She gave him a big wink. Then she got Joseph, the little baby, baby's father, to look over at Michael. And he gave him a big wink and then said ever so gently. Thanks, little man. That puzzled Michael. Why should Joseph thank him? And then he realised what he had done. You see, that hole in the wall was too high for Joseph to reach up and plug it. And he and Mary were worried in case Jesus would feel the draught and catch a cold. Of course, the moment Michael plonked the bottom in the hole, the draft stopped. When Michael got home, his friend was there waiting to greet him. Mary didn't have to worry any longer, so in Michael's honour, she sang a little lullaby. Oh, Michael was really chuffed. And he felt especially pleased now that he had a bird's eye view. Though it was really a mouse eye view, he could see everything. He saw the sheep giving their wool to keep the little baby warm. He saw the cow giving her milk to the baby when he was thirsty. Then he saw the hen laying her eggs and since she wasn't sure whether it was right to give eggs to a little baby, she gave them to Mary instead. And he saw the shepherds and the wise men give their presents. Woo, twit, woo, I've heard all about it. Do you know? I've spoken to the sheep, I've had a word with the cow, I've listened for ages to one of the hens, they told me all about it and they told me how you didn't get to see the baby. Because you didn't have a present. Oh yes, I did see the baby. But I thought you didn't have a present. What did you give him? <coughs> I gave him me for as long as he needed me. Then Michael turned and disappeared into his hole. And that is where the story ends, with Michael's words. I gave, I gave him, him me for as long, long as he needed me. me. There's no, no better gift to Jesus today or, or, any, or, day. or any day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For 
you is born this day in the city of David, a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with this angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made us known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Hello, you'll, you'll have your Chris Stingle. I expect you'll have already made it, I hope so, but if not, that's what a Chris Stingle should look like. Uh, and of course, we all know, don't we? Uh, we've been to a few Chris Stingles in our time, perhaps some of us, uh, and um, we know what it means, this strange object of an orange and a candle and sticks and sweets on it. Um, I've got this lovely globe here, this beautifully carved earth, the earth on which we live. Uh, it was given to us by some friends in Malawi when we went to Malawi, it's carved by them. You can see North America, South America there, you can see great Africa here, and a little dot up here is uh, the United Kingdom. It opens up, so it reminds us of the whole earth uh, and uh, what our symbol is about, the orange, of course. The orange, as you know, I'm sure, is the globe, the earth, the earth, the precious earth that God has given us, a gift to us. I was at Chilcot last week and they said, one of, one of the children said, it's God's gift to us, the earth, very precious. Anyway, in my uh, globe here, I've got a few things just to remind us of what we've got there. I've got... Um, Shall we have a look at this? Why have I got a holly leaf, I wonder, with holly berries? Now, it seemed to me that actually holly berries only come at one time in the year, don't they? They only come just around about Christmas for us in the Northern Hemisphere. That's really lovely and it's an important symbol for us, but it's also a reminder that the seasons change. And so the four sticks there represent the seasons of the year, don't they? The seasons of the year, as time moves on, they represent time for us as it changes. Very important to remember that in this, this strange year in which we've been uh, under lockdown and so on, as we look forward in hope to the new future uh, ahead of us. So, the seasons, there we are, a holly. Uh, and on the, on the sticks we've got um, sweets. Well, they're really representing that. They're representing the fruits of the earth. Fruits, the things that we eat, uh, the things that the earth produces. So that's really important, isn't it? That we give thanks at Christmas time as well for the many good things that we have in creation. But of course, the central uh, thing in the Christingle uh, is, the, um, is the red band there round the middle. I wonder what the red band represents. Perhaps we could say that it represents this little red dot in the middle of this cross. This little red dot in the middle of this beautiful cross that was made for us by the man who made the windows that we've got here uh, is the red dot of Christ's blood that he shed on the cross for all of us, for the whole world. Uh, and so the red is the reminder of Jesus' death, Jesus' blood. But there is hope, isn't there, of course, because Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, and so Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And so we can do this, can't we? We can light, if we can strike the match, mm -hmm. we can light the candle. And uh, I'd like you now to light your candle and remember the light 
that leads us out of darkness into light, that leads us on our way. Jesus, the light of the world. We say thank you for Jesus. face of the gospel, let us ask God for a good Christmas, that no powerful nation should tax the poor or uproot them, that no unmarried mother should be put away in disgrace, that no door will be shut on those who need to find it open, that shepherds and sheep and all of nature need not be afraid. That barbed wire and angry soldiers may not be found in Bethlehem. That wise men and wise women might appear in Europe, Asia, America, Africa, all over the world and in places particularly of conflict in our present time. that children may be preserved from those who would abuse them. That this Christmas, worship may become a manger, and the church a stable, and the rumour become a reality that Christ has come among us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
boy has been born for us. A child has been given to us. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Once we were no people. Now we are God's people. Once we walked in darkness. Now we have seen a great light. And so may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Have a, happy, a very Merry Christmas. Yes, a very Merry Christmas to you all and a Happy New Year. Let's hope for great things in 2021.